Since I mentioned to people that I was going to retire, I got hit with a barrage of questions. And some of those questions, as you could probably imagine, are about the fears that I had leading up to retirement. And so today, what I'd like to talk about are how to conquer the five biggest fears in retirement. So let's get into it. Um, First are the financial fears. People are concerned about whether or not they're going to have enough money. Are they going to have uh, enough money to to last them through the period of time, whether it's uh, savings and so on? So the first thing I suggest people do is talk to a professional. Get a financial advisor. They'll help you with your plan. They'll help you with your budget. They'll help you with savings. uh, They'll help you with an investment strategy. And if you need somebody to talk to, the person I work with is incredible. And if you leave me a note in the comments, I could send you their information. Uh, but, and, and I know there's a lot of different uh, opinions out there relative to, you know, how to pick a financial advisor, whether you do a flat fee or you do a percentage. But here's the way I look at it, is that there's a value in peace of mind. And at that peace of mind comes with paying somebody a percentage of your, of your investment portfolio, fine. If your comfort zone is in paying somebody a flat fee or by the hour, fine. But the way I see it is if you pay 1% and over the lifetime of your uh, investment uh, relationship, you make 10%, then what you're essentially doing is you're jumping over pennies for dollars and getting yourself to, you're paying 1% for a 9% return. Uh, Some people would disagree with that. I'm not here to debate that, but I think, that's uh, that's one way one way to take a look at it. But either way, talking to a professional is going to help guide that and really help you overcome some of your fears as it leads to retirement. It was tremendously helpful for us uh, because with the modeling, with the Monte Carlo uh, uh, scenarios that they give you, where they look at a thousand different scenarios, uh, looking at changes in the market and understanding how those changes are affecting our portfolio balance, those things to me create peace of mind. And the last thing I want to do during retirement is spend a bunch of time worried about running out of money. And I think that's something that that can help you. Uh, Second are healthcare costs. We all know, you just look at the news, read anything on healthcare. Healthcare costs are rising. We feel that every day. But there are ways to help hedge those healthcare costs. Um, But I think the first thing you have to do is take a real honest assessment of your own health. Are you healthy? Do you have conditions that are probably going to that are going to get worse down the road or that you're going to need care for? Do you have a family history? You know, all of those types of things. Do a realistic assessment to see what your needs are now and what your future needs might be. So that way you're able to plan for the future. Um, some of the ways that you can hedge some of the some of the costs around health care. And again, this all depends on where you live, your income during retirement and so on. But the health care exchanges, I know different people have differing opinions about the Affordable Care Act, but the one thing that it did do is it created a platform for there to be health care broadly that's affordable uh, for for people of all income brackets. And, and again, as I mentioned before, it's income based. And so there's a, that'll give you an opportunity to, to, to find health care without going directly to the insurance company or the provider and, and paying those outrageous costs. Um, the other the other piece of that is you have, you know, health care spending accounts. And, and emergency funds and, and things like that. So if you if you don't have stuff, but you think there might be something in the future, it may be worthwhile to, to have an emergency fund or to figure out if you're eligible to be in a healthcare spending account in order to put money aside in case there's costs that come up or there's medications that come up, or at least just to help you prepare for what might be down the road because you just never know. Um, and the the other one, and, and this is, one that I I advocate for is living a proactive and healthy lifestyle. One of the things that you have in retirement is you have time. And so with that time, you really have the opportunity to search out healthier options in terms of foods, uh, exercising. And again, I'm not saying everybody's going to go out and become, um, you know, a, a pro bodybuilder or a CrossFit champion. But I do think people have the opportunity to go for walks and do other engage in different types of healthy habits that are going to help with healthcare because that's over time going to um, going to lower those costs. I know one of the things that Kaiser was doing for a long time for their employees 
is they were asking folks to get their annual screenings. And by and when an employee got an annual screening, they get $150 because they know that preventative care is what keeps you out of the hospital and what helps you keep you long, keeps you healthy longer. And ultimately is going to lower those costs for you. So you don't get burdened by healthcare costs uh, in your retirement. Um, the, the next one is social isolation. Um, a lot of people feel a lot of social isolation when they retire because their circumstances fundamentally change. Um, you're not going into the office every day. You're not interacting with some of the same people that you were interacting with before. Um, and so how do you, how do you retire and not live in a bubble? That's something I thought I was in, I was in an important job. I dealt with a lot of people and I had a lot of interaction and solved a lot of problems for a lot of people every day and organizations every day. And, and how do you deal with that? So some of the ways that I dealt with it, and I, I suggest you may want to consider is, you know, spending more time with family and friends. Um, a lot of us have, some of us might have aging parents. I know I have aging parents. My wife has aging parents. So we make it a point to spend time regularly with them, um, usually a few days a month, at least, just that we, that we plan out to spend with them that we didn't have otherwise when we were working. Uh, joining clubs and volunteering. It's, you'd be surprised at how many different types of clubs and organizations are out there that are just ripe for you to, to go and, and help and give back um, to others. Um, hobbies. Uh, I, I, I enjoy gardening. I, I, I love gardening. Gardening, I get geeked out about gardening. I could do a whole channel on gardening. I'm not this incredible YouTube gardener but I love to get out in, in the soil. I, I like to say I'm loyal to the soil. I get in there, I like to pick up the earthworms and try to figure out what the microbes are doing and looking at the moisture levels, trying to understand the pH and you know, blah, blah, blah. But again, this isn't a, this isn't a, a gardening channel, so I, I won't go there. But maybe if you, if you think I should start one, let me know in the comments and, and maybe I'll start one. Um, the, uh, the other hobby I have, I, I love to golf. Uh, and, and golfing, not only is it athletic and fun, but it gets you out. It's good for your peace of mind. It gets you out into the park. You're walking. You see the trees. You see nature. You smell the grass. Uh, you have the opportunity to meet some people. You know, all of these things give you the opportunity to interact with others. And who knows? You might meet people you actually like <laughs> and, and spend time with them and, and get to know them. And because you already know one thing is you have a shared interest because you're in that place. Um, community engagement. Uh, there, there's, you start to, it's, it's funny, there was the song, the Disney song, A Whole New World, A Whole New World opens up relative to opportunities to get involved in your community. Um, one of the things I do as an example is I'm on the architectural review committee for my homeowners association. So whenever somebody in the community uh, makes a change to the exterior of their house, they have to get it approved through the HOA and I'm on the committee that approves those. So it not only gives me the opportunity to interact with folks in the community that are on the board, it gives me the opportunity to interact with community members. It also gives me opportunities to interact with people in the community. So there's, that's, that's another good way to, to get involved, just different types of community activities and, and, and engaging that way. I think one of the things I read the other day was about the grand jury. I think, I think grand juries and, and the legal processes and the legislative processes and stuff, I think are fairly interesting. And I, it's something I don't know as much as I'd like to know about, but I think it's, I think it's incredibly interesting. And so you have the opportunity to get inside of there. Or a lot of people go out and they do part-time work. I think I mentioned in another video, I would explored going into substitute teaching, which I still might do in the future. Um, or I might become a marshal at a golf course and just make sure that people move along and offer people water on hot days and just hang out and, you know, with the bonus of getting free golf, because again, it, it keeps you from falling into that bubble. You continue to interact with people and you don't feel as though you've completely fallen off the, off the face of the earth. Um, and along with that social isolation, sometimes comes that loss of identity. Again, if you had a job that kind of defined who you were at work. And, 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 you know, in my case, people responded to me for a certain, a certain way when I'd walk into the room, 
because of the position that I held. Um, the that, that you create an identity, you become, you know, whether it's a whether it's a powerful person, whether it's a solution oriented person, you know, whatever type of individual you are at work, you know, that's an identity, and you lose that when you retire for no other reason except for the fact that you don't go to work. And if you're a supervisor at work, you don't want to come home and start supervising your, your spouse because, you know, that'll create uh, a problem. That's, that's kind of a bridge to nowhere, and potentially, unless that's what you already do. But, you know, this again, this this isn't that type of channel either. So, but again, I, you know, there's there's opportunities to, to as Jay-Z would say, allow me to reintroduce myself. There's ways to reintroduce yourself. You can explore new hobbies. You have the opportunity to figure out things that you might like that you maybe didn't know that you liked before. Uh, one of the things I talk about is I started to pursue some of my passions with, with gardening and golfing. Um, you have the opportunity to learn new things. Uh, we have a university uh, in, the, in the area that has a, um, what I call an ecosystem. There's, just, there's lectures, there's all these things. And, and one of the things that I keyed in on is they have a master gardener program. And I think that would be great because again, I get geeked out about things in the garden um, and not just the stuff you see, but some of the science behind it and how light affects plants and, and all the things that I didn't want to learn in, my, in my, um, my high school science classes that all come to pass now. You know, those are the things that I get excited about them. And so, but as a master gardener, not only do you learn those things in, in deep detail, but you also have the obligation to go out to the community and teach people in the community about uh, some of these things. So I, I think it's, I think it's great. Um, again, learning the piano. I've, I've, I mentioned when I was younger, I used to be a DJ and I've always been in music, always been around music, but could never play an instrument. And so now that I have the time, I have the opportunity to learn how to play the piano. And so I, I love, I, I'm not great. I'll probably never be Beethoven or I'll never be Mozart. Uh, I might be a better Beethoven <clears throat> or a better Mozart. Who knows? I'll be a six foot eight Beethoven and or Mozart and or Bach or, you know, whoever your, your favorite is. If you like classical music, I'd be interested to know who your favorite is. Let me know in the comments uh, below. But you yeah, had the opportunity to learn, learn some new things. And, you know, one of the things I do think that is underestimated as an opportunity is really the opportunity to focus on getting to know yourself better. Uh, because we get so caught in the work, we get so caught into our obligations, we have so little bandwidth to do anything else. This is an opportunity to, to really do an assessment of who you are, what makes you click, what makes you who you are, and are you the person you want to be? And if the answer is yes, phenomenal. But if there's things you want to change about yourself, it's an opportunity to do that. And you get to know yourself um, a little bit better. And um, so, and, and the last, the last one that I have that I think is on everybody's mind. So I'm glad everybody stuck around for this one, because this is really important is, are the market fluctuations? One of the, one of the biggest questions I get is Sabado, how do you deal with market fluctuations? Because as we all know, we have this whole interest rate situation and it's affecting the markets and the markets are going up, they're going down. There's all these different types of things. And fortunately, working through my financial advisor, we were able to manage through that. Uh, we were able to diversify our portfolio so that way the swings weren't too high. Certainly our accounts were down for a period of time, but they weren't as down as they could have been had we gone with a different type of investment strategy. But when they go up, you know, they're doing better now, but we're not, they're not incredibly 500% type high because we, we know that bigger risk, bigger reward, uh, but we want to make sure that we can maintain over time our, uh, a certain amount of value in our portfolio. Um, one of the other things you could do is, is really look at investing more conservatively. Uh, our market, our strategy is to, for returns of about six to 8% annually. This year we're above that, a couple years we were below that. But if you're about six to 8%, then if you follow the 4% rule, and again, I'm not a financial advisor, never played one on TV, 
but I know that's what a lot of people talk about is you're still going to continue to grow your portfolio even if you stay at that at that four percent and you never run or you may not grow it but you're not going to run out of money but it takes into account the low years and the high years um so but but you, you, I, I think it's it's important not to get into the habit of chasing hot trends uh cashing out your portfolio for one hot stock because then you could find yourself in a situation like the folks at GameStop were putting all that money propped up the company and then when people sold there were people that lost a bunch of money and, and in retirement we just we just can't handle that. Um, you know, it's important to stay in abreast of the market trends. What's going on with the market now? What's what's happening? Are we looking at um, um, a bull market? Are we looking at a bear market? Are we looking at certain things that are happening in the markets that are going to potentially affect the portfolio? Um, and not be afraid to to revise our strategy. Uh, one of the things that I think happens a lot from a planning perspective, particularly people who spend a lot of time getting into their plan is they'll get so wedded to a plan that it becomes difficult for them to change that plan. And sometimes you have to revise that plan because market conditions change, the information that you're working with changes. And I think sometimes there's, there's, there's some of us that have a hard time taking in new information because we are so comfortable with the information that we developed or that we glean uh, going into our original analysis, but changing it. And again, just making sure that as you look at your strategy and those types of things, that you have realistic goals. So again, there's the, the five, just to recap, the five uh, biggest fears that I think you'll now be able to conquer uh, in a big way, or you'll be able to smash the same way you're going to smash that like and subscribe button. You're going to be able to smash your fears of retirement are you know your financial fears uh, making sure that you look at you know you talk to a professional that can help you understand different places to put your money to help hedge against and and ensure and budget and and those types of things um you know looking at your health care costs and and making sure that you find the most cost effective health care for yourself and your family you know as you retire and and looking at ways to cover yourself in case of something catastrophic and, and so on uh, dealing with social isolation, it can happen. It doesn't happen to everybody, but we have strat. We now have strategies to deal with social isolation, getting involved with things that maybe we didn't have time to do uh, when we were working. Um, dealing with uh, directly and and straightforward that loss of isolation. Or, I'm sorry that that loss of identity. You know, and it's not necessarily a loss of identity, but your identity changes. And I think we become afraid of that because we're afraid of the unknown, but grab that, own it and step into that new identity because damn it, you worked hard to get to where you are and who you are. You know, you may feel like I'm insufficient or whatever the case is, but you still matter. You're still uh, significant. Uh, you're still adequate. You're still a badass, even though you're retired, no matter what, um, Anybody tries to say about losing your identity or losing the power and those types of things, I thank you. But it's just a matter of, of finding your your next um, your your next chapter, your next your identity in the new chapter, which is going to be greater than the last chapter. Because the fact of the matter is, is if you're looking at early retirement, then you're already ahead of the curve, and you're going to have more bandwidth emotionally than most of your peers because you're gonna be in a place where you're financially independent enough to focus on the things that you wanna focus on. And lastly, are you know, really looking at those market fluctuations. I think that when you, when you have a strategy for addressing those market fluctuations, you're prepared for them. And one of the biggest ways to conquer any type of fear is through preparation, so you're prepared for those. So I hope these strategies uh, help you overcome the, the fear of retirement and if you have any questions, please get me in the comments. I try to respond to all of the comments. I'm going to continue putting up content, but I, again, appreciate it. And please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and share the channel with, with some of your friends. And, and just know that by liking and subscribing to the channel, it helps the YouTube algorithm push this information out to others that may need it, that may not have necessarily found this channel yet. So. On that note, I'm out.
Have a good rest of your day.